O.D. Perry's death was just one of many caused by gang-related violence, but his passing had a profound impact on his gang. Not only was Perry's death a consequence of a cycle of violence between the gangster disciples and the black disciples, his death itself led to the beginning of a fresh cycle, as blood was spilled on both sides without any clear resolution. Shocking video footage from the scene of the crime that was released over a decade later alleged that FBG Duck had a major role to play in Perry's death. That's right, if these claims proved to be accurate, then FBG Duck actually killed O.D. Perry on camera. That reveal would also lead to a ton of trouble for Duck down the line, the death of O.D. Perry. O.D. Perry's death in August 2011 escalated issues between the gangster disciples and black disciples. It would prove to be the catalyst for a lot more violence. I'm going to get to those issues in a bit, but for now, I want to focus on footage that has come out over a decade after the shooting. While he was not the killer, camera footage has revealed that FBG Duck was allegedly the getaway driver and was present at the scene of the crime. In the footage, we can see a couple of cars pulling up and driving past the crime scene, leading to an ambulance pulling up. According to reports, Perry was shot multiple times in the body and neck at around 11 p.m. After the release of the footage, it has been claimed that the driver of the getaway car was wearing an orange t-shirt, which just happened to be the same t-shirt Duck had been wearing that day. This is, of course, far from confirmed. But if Duck actually had anything to do with the murder, then that would put him right in the crosshairs of the Black Disciples. It's a huge shame when you take a second to think about it, because all this gang activity has led to years of Black on black violence that hasn't done anybody any favors. But beyond Duck's association with the gangster disciples, why would he have anything to do with the murder of Odie Perry? Well, this is where things get interesting. Odie Perry's death was a direct consequence of the death of Shondale Tuka Gregory, who was just 15 years old when he got shot down at a Chicago bus stop on January 12, 2011. Tuka was allegedly a member of the gangster disciples, and he was targeted in response to the death of a black disciples member named Edric T.Y. Walker. That reason was never officially confirmed, but over 12 years later, odds are, that's the best reason we are going to get. As I'd mentioned earlier, young Odie Perry rolled with the Black Disciples, automatically putting Perry and Tuca at odds with each other. The Black Disciples took Perry's death really hard, renaming the 6,400 block of South Martin Luther King Jr. Drive to O Block in honor of his memory, while Tuca's crew would also come to be known as Tucaville after his death. Unfortunately, this kind of violence was an increasingly common occurrence in Chicago, but Tuca's death would somehow lead to him becoming the most despised person in rap history. It is understandable for guys like Chief Keef or King Von to hate him because he was a member of the Gangster Disciples, but the lengths that the industry has gone to ruin his name have been nothing short of insane. Keef was the rapper that started it all off insulting Tuca in songs like Three Hunter and John Madden as he himself rose to prominence. His fellow Black Disciple members, Lil Durk and King Von, also jumped on the train. Von, in particular, really laid into the kid in his song How I Rock, Tuca Pack. The lyrics went a little something like this. Drop some, everybody holler, Von drop something, but I can't, cause all the ops dead. It's hard to drop something smoking on this Tuca Pack, and it's loud as f Phenom caught Tuca getting off the bus. I know Tuca mad as hell. He probably tired of us. But when I die, find Tuca and I'ma beat him up. The phrase smoking Tuca really took off. It was initially just a play on the fact that Tuca got smoked. But non-Chicago artists began thinking it had something to do with marijuana. Just like that, the death of a 15-year-old became slang in the hip-hop scene. Even though the use of the term has become relatively normalized in the industry, hearing Tuca's name thrown around is not easy for everyone. In an interview, Tuca's mother spoke about how messed up this entire situation really is. She said, My son had nothing to do with nothing in this rap industry. He didn't even know how to beatbox, let alone bust a lyric for a rap. For him to be disrespected and mocked for his death, they're the ones. My son was not about that lifestyle. They're the ones who are making him famous and blowing him up like this because they can't stop saying his name. You don't even know my son. Tuka's death hit all of the gangster disciples really hard, and retaliation was inevitable. It was later revealed that Gakira K.I. Barnes, who was a member of the gang, had taken out Perry. She would have been just about 14 years old at the time. She was a bit of a hit woman for the gangster disciples, with alleged ties to the deaths of well over a dozen people by the time she was shot down in 2014. Barnes wasn't always a cold-blooded killer, though, as she apparently wanted to become a social worker. But according to a Chicago journalist, all the violence she witnessed changed change things. The journalist claimed her friend started getting shot and I think that she got sucked into gang life and she realized that's where she's going to get respect and honor and the warm fuzzies that other kids get from playing basketball or playing chess or something in high school. But that wasn't all though. Tuca was allegedly one of Barnes's closest friends and after he died, no one was going to stop her from getting at Perry. In addition to that, Barnes was also tight with FBG Duck, which means his alleged participation in the murder of O.D. Perry begins to make a lot more sense. 
So when you take a moment to think about it, Barnes actually had everything to do with the Black Disciples renaming a set of the gang to O Block. Despite the fact that she was just 14 when she took out Perry, Barnes was nothing short of a cold-blooded murderer. Rumors surrounding Perry's death suggest that Barnes actually took one of his guns and showed it off on social media for everyone to see in a video clip. Barnes may have been the one who pulled the trigger, but the Black Disciples clearly did not see this as a solo operation, especially based on what would happen to FBG Duck a few years later. Everything that happened between Tuka, O.D. Perry, and Gakira Barnes was just the result of yet another cycle of violence between two warring gangs, which will be a common theme that is going to keep popping up over the rest of the video. Anyway, the Black Disciples and the Gangster Disciples had been at odds for years, and all it has led to is a ton of bloodshed. Let's step back for a second and look at the significant moments involving these gangs. The Black Disciples' main claim to fame was shooting an 11-year-old gang member. Now with Tuka's death, the gang had murdered a 15-year-old and had gone out of its way to insult his memory as much as possible. His death obviously hit the Gangster Disciples hard, as a portion of the, the gang began being known as Tukaville or Tuka Gang. The cycle of violence was nowhere close to ending because the Black Black disciples had quite the response coming their way with the murder of Odie Perry, but that was what made all of this killing feel even more pointless. These gangs appeared to be feuding for vague reasons at that point, and one death usually resulted in several more. That was a sentiment that Tuka's mother touched on as well when she said, I just want to know why, why? That's all I have to ask them. What has my son done to y'all to make y'all disrespect him like this? Every song they make has got, we smoking on Tuka. Tuka this. Tuka that. You know how long my son has been gone? Since 2011. This is 2022 and he's still a trending topic. I don't want this lifestyle. He didn't want this lifestyle. He can't be here and be his voice, so I'm gonna do it for him. That comment by Tuka's mother perfectly nails how ridiculous the escalation of some of these issues can be. Tuka and Odie Perry both died well over a decade ago, yet their names are continuously dredged up by rival gangs. Every time they insult the dead, it inevitably leads to even more conflict between them. But why are they still beating a dead horse? It is anyone's guess, but doing just that could have played a role in bringing down a ton of heat on FBG Duck, but I will get into that a little later. Later. Regardless of the vague, sometimes pointless reasons the gangster disciples and black disciples went to war with one another, these cycles of violence were never ending, with a history going back decades soaked in bloodshed. Cycle of violence. It is no coincidence that both the gangster disciples and black disciples share the same last name. Both gangs trace their origins back to the mid-70s. Back then, David Barksdale, who was also known as King David, was the chief of a larger gang called the Devil's Disciples. But when David died in 1974, the gang began to splinter over the next few years. Going back a few years, David's Devil's Disciples were involved in a bitter feud with the Supreme Gangsters, with Larry the King Hoover holding a high rank in the gang. In 1969, Hoover and Barksdale agreed on a ceasefire and actually teamed up to form a gang known as the Black Gangster Disciple Nation. Once David died in 1974, Hoover took control of the Black Gangster Disciples. Things were okay for a bit, but once Hoover was sent to prison, the BGD began to splinter into the Black Disciples, Gangster Disciples, and the Black Gangsters. Everything was on the verge of falling apart, but Hoover was able to broker a peace while still in prison. By the time the late 80s rolled around, Hoover had lost interest in the BGD and focused almost entirely on the Gangster Disciples. This made the rest of the members pretty angry, leading to members of the Black Disciples breaking away from the Black Gangster Disciples and doing their own thing. Anyway, once that happened, the Gangster Disciples and Black Disciples formed due to issues both factions were having with the change in management after Barksdale's death, in addition to all the reasons I just mentioned. For the next couple of decades, both gangs were relatively low-key, despite a lot of infighting and changes in positions of power. But in 1994, the Black Disciples would get a massive spotlight in the news for all the wrong reasons. Most gangs don't really have a minimum age requirement to join up, so Robert Yummy Sandifer was just 11 years old when he became a member of the Black Disciples. Sandifer was given the name Yummy because he allegedly loved cookies, but he wasn't all that sweet in real life, as he had already been arrested a dozen times. In August 1994, he was handed a pistol in order to take some people out, but he screwed it up. Yummy opened fire carelessly and ended up hitting several young people, including 14-year-old Siobhan Dean, who was just an innocent bystander that got hit by an errant bullet and died. Yummy went on the run. With both the police and the Black Disciples looking for him, he wasn't going to make it on his own for very long. 
Three days later, on August 31st, Yummy met up with two other Black Disciple members who claimed they were going to get him to a safe location. Instead of doing that though, they took him to an underpass and shot him dead. Yummy's death shook the city of Chicago, and one of the public guardians who represented the child before his death said Sandifer was just one of many. He said, there's a lot of Yummy Sandifers out there. Not all of them are murdered after doing a killing at the gang's behest. He might be slightly younger, but there are a lot of young kids out there that the gangs mobilized to do their dirty work for them, and it's still going on. His death continues to live in infamy even today, as that is the event the Black Disciples are most closely associated with. Even the U.S. Department of Justice has a profile on the gang which states, the Black Disciples, BDs, are the Chicago folks gang that is structured more like a religion than a corporate enterprise, and that gained international publicity in 1994 by executing an 11-year-old member. Eventually, things cooled off, but hostilities between both gangs remained and became more prominent with the rise of drill rap, roughly around the time of Perry's death. The crazy thing is, this subgenre of conventional hip-hop may never have even existed without the issues between the gangster disciples and black disciples. Guys like Chief Keef, Lil Durk, and Lil Reese are often credited with being the pioneers of the genre, all of whom have strong ties to the Black Disciples. These were the guys that FBG Duck was often beefing with, so while the rise of drill rap changed the music landscape, it gave these gangs another avenue to diss each other. The crazy thing is, the violence between both these gangs hardly took any time off. I have already spoken about Tuka and Odie Perry's deaths, and Gakira Barnes and FBG Duck's role in them. After all of this happened, and both gangs were reeling from their losses, a feud between Chief Keef of the Black Disciples and the gangster disciples Lil Jojo would lead to more death. Back in 2012, Chief Keef dropped a track titled 300, where he went after the Tuka gang, which, as I had mentioned earlier, is closely associated with the gangster disciples. The gangster disciples responded through Lil Jojo, who released a response dissing Keef's crew, which eventually led to an online war between both rappers. Things got worse, though, when Jojo filmed himself driving past Black Disciple territory while shouting profanities at people. All of this resulted resulted in Jojo eventually being shot dead, and Chief Keef responding with a couple of tweets mocking the death. Jojo's death led to more rounds of retaliatory killings, something that had become something of a pattern between both gangs. The reason I wanted to tell you about this beef and Lil Jojo's death is because not only did he work with FBG Duck on a couple of tracks, but his brother would also have some interesting things to say a few years later about FBG Duck and his issues with the Black Disciples. But I will come back to that in a bit. Anyway, the fact that these issues between both gangs have been going on for so long has led to that part of Chicago often. Being referred to as Chirac, comparing it to war-torn Iraq. Not only that, but O Block also used to be called Weex City because it was wild, insane, and crazy. The area really lived up to that reputation as 19 people were shot in O Block between June 2011 and June 2014, including ODP. Perry. Two of those 19 people died, but no one was ever charged with a crime and none of the murder weapons were found. It doesn't even end there. There were times when crossing the wrong street could lead to a bullet in the head. In an interview, a beat cop from the area said, you can catch a shooting in the rain, the snow, or the sun. The GD's gangster disciples won't go into the McDonald's or the drive through because that's BD Black Disciples. It's all about territory. That comment gives a lot of insight into just how things were between both gangs. They had built arbitrary borders, and crossing them, even unknowingly, could lead to a bullet in the head. As I had mentioned right at the very beginning, O.D. Perry's death wasn't just a result of a cycle of violence, but his death itself would spark yet another cycle. With Tuka and O.D. both out of the picture, FBG Duck and Gakira Barnes would be central to this new cycle spread across a six-year period. The gangster disciples had struck the final, major blow by killing Perry, which meant that the Black Disciples were ready to do whatever was necessary to avenge his death. Considering the information we have so far and the roles Duck and Barnes played, they would be right in the crosshairs of the gang. Blood feud in O Block. A blood feud can be defined as a very long fight between two families or groups in which each group kills members of the other group in order to punish the group for earlier murders. Sound familiar? Well, that's because the gangster disciples and black disciples have been engaged in a blood feud for decades. After Odie Perry's death, it was safe to assume that the black disciples were waiting for the right moment to strike. That moment would end up presenting itself on April 11, 2014, when Gakira Barnes would be shot multiple times. Two other people were injured in the shootout, but the police claimed they were certain that Barnes was the intended target of the attack. It was also revealed that the killer was able to find her because she had shared her live location on 
social media. The killer was never caught or identified at that time, but in July 2021, the Chicago police released documents that gave a little more insight into the murder. It read, an unknown M1 wearing a gray hoodie and blue jeans approached the victims. The unknown offender then produced a handgun and began firing in the direction of the victims, striking all three. The unknown offender then was observed entering an unknown vehicle, making good his escape. In a shocking development, those same documents named Davon Bennett as the murderer, who was better known to fans as King Von Von was able to find Barnes and shot her nine times. And even though law enforcement knew Von was the man responsible, they did not have enough evidence to charge him with anything. As far as the Black Disciples were concerned, it was one down, one to go. Everyone knew that FBG Duck had something to do with the murder. And considering the fact that he had been beefing with other members of the gang, it would only be a matter of time before they came for him. That would end up happening in 2020. Back in March of that year, Duck dropped the music video to his track Dead. The end of the chorus saw the rapper explicitly disrespect the dead. Said I wasn't gonna diss the dead and okay, I did it. But T-Roy and OD, them dead beyond that, entire verses of the song were dedicated to dissing other deceased members associated with the Black Disciples. The entire track was a slap in the gang's face. Something like this isn't really out of the ordinary, especially in the Chicago drill rap scene. But odds are that Duck's inclusion of OD in the track pushed the Black Disciples over the edge. Less than a month after the track dropped, FBG Duck would be shot dead in broad daylight. Reports coming out of the attack stated that two cars pulled up to the rapper and four men jumped out before opening fire at Duck around 4.30 p.m. on August 4, 2020. They let off about 40 shots, with over 20 of them hitting the rapper in an ambush that lasted all of 15 seconds. Duck was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead. That wasn't all, though, as his girlfriend, who was waiting for him in a car, also got shot twice in the wrist, in addition to a 36-year-old man who was shot in the back and the leg. In the wake of Duck's death, the Chicago police firmly believed his death was a result of him insulting Perry and other deceased Black Disciples members in a music video. But that might not have been entirely true. Do you remember me mentioning that Lil Jojo's brother would have some interesting things to say about FBG Duck and his issues with the Black Disciples? Well, this is where he comes in. Jojo's brother Swag De Niro rolled with a similar crew and is a successful artist as well. In an interview, De Niro revealed that he didn't think Duck's murder had much to do with the track, but more to do with the life style Duck and his fellow rappers had adopted in general. He said, that be that outside looking ish. I mean, it don't matter whether that record was put out or not. We still hot. Both sides is hot. If you around, then you around. You know, you in bounds and the field is a field. So if you in bounds, it can go down at any time. So with that record or without that record, we still was in this. It's timing, man. I don't know if it was his time, but I pray it wasn't his time. But you know what I'm saying? I don't know. But it wasn't the record the record. It is difficult to know just what role Dead played in FBG Duck being taken out, but we do know one thing. There was a bounty on his head before he died. An article from January 2023 cited an FBI report which stated that law enforcement interviewed a witness in the wake of Duck's death and learned some very interesting information. The witness revealed that King Von first placed a $50,000 bounty on FBG Duck's head before upping it to $100,000. This essentially confirmed that Duck's death wasn't the result of some random violence, but was just the next chapter in the never-ending feud between the Black Disciples and the Gangster Disciples. FBI agents were eventually able to arrest the men behind the murder, and in a press conference, they were quick to pin the blame on the drill rap scene. An agent said, what's happening on social media and what's happening in music videos that are on YouTube, particularly in the drill rap genre, it shows you what's happening in the city. It shows you exactly what's happening in the city, which are people are flooding the streets to commit acts of violence and then either bragging about acts of violence or talking about how they're going to retaliate through other acts of violence and it's happening on a regular basis. Again, that is why it's significant that, as law enforcement, we're able to investigate and hold people accountable for the acts they're committing. For instance, you can go on the internet right now, you can see people in music videos and guns all over the place. An FBI report stated that one of the guns used to murder the rapper could be linked to a number of other crimes. Over a year after FBG Duck's death, the FBI arrested five people for the murder in October 2021. Charles C. Murder Liggins, Kenneth Kenny Robert Robertson to Carlos Loss offered, Christopher C. Thang Thomas, and Marcus Muop Smart. Of the five men, Smart had allegedly conducted several hits for O-Block in the past. All five men were charged with murder in aid of racketeering and federal firearm violations and assaults in aid of racketeering. The U.S. Attorney for the Northern District of Illinois, John Lausch, who served from 2017 to March 2023, knew that this was a big win in their fight against gang-related violence when he said, there are now five people in custody who weren't in custody before five people who were alleged to have committed a murder in broad daylight in the city of Chicago. Now it's known to them, and it's known to anybody else who might be committing similar acts of brazen violence 
and who may brag about it or not brag about it that their day has come. Right now, I want to take a step back and really look at everything that has happened. Tuka Gregory was murdered by O.D. Perry in early 2011. Why? Because Tuka was allegedly involved in the death of a Black Disciples member. About eight months later, Perry was murdered himself. His killer would turn out to be Gakira Barnes, who was close friends with Tuka. She also happened to be tight with FBG Duck, who was allegedly the getaway driver when Barnes shot Perry. This was not officially confirmed, but camera footage showed a man in an orange t-shirt driving the getaway car. And guess who had been wearing an orange t-shirt earlier in the day? That's right, FBG Duck. OD's death would trigger another cycle of violence that would claim more lives. This cycle would not be as intense, but rather spread out over a six-year period as the Black Disciples would look to avenge O.D. Perry's death, no matter what the cost. About three years after the deaths of Tuka and O.D., Gakira Barnes would also be shot down, and her murderer would turn out to be a member of the Black Disciples. This meant that her death was a result of the gang retaliating and avenging O.D.'s death. At this point, I want to remind you that Tuka was 15 when he died, O.D. was 20, and Gakira Barnes was just 17 years old. They were just kids pulled into a world that did not completely understand, and they paid for it with their lives. It made sense that gangs targeted them, though. Children are often way more impressionable, and people are far less likely to be suspicious of them. Even in the U.S. Department of Justice's assessment of the Black Disciples, the department realized just how important younger people are to gangs' operations. The statement read, It's Black Disciples' top leadership makes a good living off its type of youth slavery, and by opening up new operations in new geographical areas. Suppression of the BDs and similar gangs should include enacting both civil and criminal penalties against adult gang leaders who use children to do their dirty work, eliminate the costs to the adult gang leaders in the criminal exploitation of children, eliminating any social benefits the gang claims to provide, a leadership, educating community leaders and parents about gang profiles, and allowing natural conflict in gang leadership to produce the gang splintering effect. Anyway, about six years after after Barnes' passing, FBG Duck would release a track dissing both Odie and T-Roy. Both men were members of the Black Disciples, and Roy was actually one of King Von's closest friends. Less than a month later, Duck would be shot in broad daylight, with an alleged bounty on his head placed by King Von. One death would inevitably lead to another. And it is possible that Duck would not have been taken out if he hadn't played a role in Perry's murder. But hey, I could be wrong. Considering how little it takes for these gangs to take people out, Duck may have always been headed for trouble. Regardless of what could have happened, these endless cycles of violence meant that FBG Duck was now dead for his involvement in Odie Perry's death on August 10, 2011, which we can tell from the camera footage that allegedly put him at the crime scene. Where does the violence end? Will it ever end? One murder will always lead to another, which will lead to yet another, continuing a trail of violence, death, and bloodshed. And that's our video. If you found it intriguing, check one of these out too. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.